this first where the waters can Water, universal solvent. The single ingredient that allows for life on our planet. Here we're standing at the base of the Nisqually River. Around the bend and up the mountain is the mighty Nisqually Glacier, one of the few glaciers in, on this continent that's actually grown over the past few years. According to the measurements of the knowledge seekers on the mountain. Here you can see water in all three of its forms. At the far end of this river, you'll find ice, solid and hard. Here it flows along in, in, in its liquid form. And above, you can see the physical manifestation of the gaseous water. Here we live in a rainforest where the mists drift over the mountains every morning and the trees grow thick and lush. This is the power of water, the power of granting life. Below us, the Nisqually Valley spreads out, bringing fish and bear and deer, a place to live and things to eat. All of this because of the power of the water. Do you see that log? That was a mighty tree once, ripped out of the soil and carried down. Every one of those rocks is a boulder, picked up by the water and scattered throughout the Nisqually Valley. This is the physical power of flowing water. And here you see the physical power of water. There was used to be a small crack in this mighty boulder. And every summer, the liquid water would seep down into the crack, and every winter it would freeze. And slowly, inch by inch, the water forced the boulder apart, leaving two boulders in its place. It was water that broke this giant granite rock in half. Here at Crater Lake in Oregon, water has filled a, a formerly dormant and sterile volcano with millions upon millions of gallons of life, making one of the purest, bluest lakes in the world. Here the physical property of refraction turns a sterile gray rock into the most beautiful blue jewel of the Cascades. It's called the Mirror of Heaven. Here in the temperate rainforest of Mount Rainier National Park, the thermodynamic powers of water capture and hold the heat of the sun in perfect balance to provide the life-giving support needed by untold thousands of plants, many of which haven't even been discovered yet. It, give, it gives life to the mighty trees that form the log in the center of picture. It gives life to the reeds along the shore. It protects them from the cold blasts of winds in the winter and from the scorching sun in the summer. Each plant carries within it some water, and that water keeps the plant warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Also, there is, a, there is an owl in this picture, if you can find it. I'm going to leave the picture up for a little longer. Somewhere in this picture is an owl. Can anybody tell me where the owl is? It's allowed, it too is allowed to live here due to the many powers of water. Here I present you with one of the most mysterious of water's powers. This is a picture I took on the beach of the sunset, but when I took this picture, the sun had already set. It had long gone down behind the horizon, and had I taken this picture over the land, you wouldn't be able to see the sun. So, can anybody tell me, think about this, we'll go over this later in the lesson, why can I still see the sun? And, again, the physical power of the water is displayed here as well, the waves crashing onto the rocks, constantly pounding them into sand. Here water tears apart the rocks with both of its physical and chemical properties and its thermodynamic properties in the winter and turns it into sand, providing homes for all of the sea creatures that live in the tide pools.